So what's the difference between China and Vietnam? Okay, sorry, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, let's get a couple of facts out of the way. First of all, I have to say that China at the moment is far more developed than Vietnam is. If you want to see pretty skyscrapers, amazing cities, technology, you know, infrastructure, railways, things like that, of course, China's far, far, far ahead as far as Vietnam's concerned. Fact number one. Fact number two, Vietnam is far, far, far more developed as far as the internet is concerned and being open to the world. If you want to be able to basically communicate with the world, if you want to see Facebook and YouTube and, and be a part of the whole global thing that's going on in the world these days, Vietnam's great. China is very cut off. It's designed that way. It's got to do with control. And uh, that is a huge, huge factor when it comes to the two different countries. But this is all about, you know, what the differences are, but also some of the similarities, because someone who's lived in China for as long as I have, visiting Vietnam was literally kind of like going back in time. The people, the atmosphere, the culture, things people do, it's almost exactly the same as China. When I first got to China in 2006, I mean, the side of the road stalls, the drinking and the barbecue and the eateries outside, the attitude, the friendliness, the openness, it's all there. All of the things that made me fall in love with China, you will find in Vietnam at the moment. One thing that struck me straight away, which I find very strange, is the lack of animosity towards foreigners in Vietnam. Because let's be quite honest, it wasn't that long ago that America and Vietnam were fighting each other. And uh, I fully expected, because I, I have white skin, I look like an American, that I would have, you know, sort of scowls or people that were not very happy with me. But I found the complete opposite. I found very friendly, very open people who absolutely were very genuine and, and honest with me and, and lovely. Whereas in China, although you do, and especially you used to, very much get the same sort of openness and friendliness and hospitality, there's always been a little bit of malice and uh, an air of caution thrown in there as well. You very often hear about these, uh, well, sometimes they say 100 years of humiliation, sometimes 200 years of humiliation. It's a huge chip on their shoulder about the opium wars and they feel like China's been taken advantage of by foreign powers for centuries and been humiliated. And it's kind of like a cry bully thing where they go like, oh, you guys are so mean. You always take advantage of us, so you know, you suck, that kind of thing. And I've always found that to be very petty and I've found that to be very counterintuitive because if someone's been beaten by a bully, the last thing you want to do is run around saying, oh, I've been beaten by a bully and wave it around like it's a, it's a trophy or something like that, you know? So it's kind of silly. Anyway, because of all that animosity and the history and the, the way um, people are educated in China, that sometimes comes to the surface where it can actually be quite unpleasant and that animosity can shine through. Although for the most part, my experiences in China have been very positive, like I've said, and like you can see through my videos. However, in Vietnam, I found from the get-go, people were incredibly open and very friendly. Let's move on to food. Now, I didn't think much of Vietnamese food because I was getting it um, confused. My whole life, I've kind of lumped Thai food and Vietnamese food together. And that's my mistake because they're actually not the same. I mean, sure, we're talking about a similar region here. You do get things like the occasional bit of lemongrass being used here and there in between, and I hate lemongrass. But I was blown away by especially the French influence in the uh, food over there. The banh mi is still my favorite food from pretty much all of Asia. I mean, barring some Japanese dishes, but I absolutely love banh mi. The bun cha that we had in, in Vietnam was stunning. The street food is great. The beer is fantastic. Um, it's actually, to be honest, in recent years been one of my most favorite trips as far as food is concerned was this whole adventure we did through Vietnam because not only is the food really good it's also incredibly cheap you know if I have to weigh up experiences going to a place like Japan where the food is amazing but very expensive but then going to a place like Vietnam where the food is now maybe not as amazing as Japan but because you pay so little for it it makes up for it and actually it ends up being a better experience um, also, compared to Chinese food, I have love Chinese food. I've been all over China. I've tried all the different areas, all the different types. And um, I was still very impressed. Maybe it's because I'm so used to Chinese food by now, but uh, the, the Vietnamese food was such a welcome change that it made a very, very solid impression on me. Now, for the last point, I'd like to talk about uh, just the general atmosphere in both countries and where they're both going. 
You see, right now, like I said, Vietnam is kind of like China 10 or 15 years ago, where there's this growth and there's this energy and there's this, um, you can feel it in the air when you're there and you can see it, that people are happy, people are starting to make money, there's promise for the future. Yes, people are poor, but and not all people, obviously you get tons of rich people, but people are poor, but they can see the future. They can see things are getting better, they see change. Whereas in China right now, people have reached the top. People have money, at least as much money as they're gonna get, and they're starting to see things go down and they're starting to see the government clamp down and more regulations. And I'll be honest with you, the atmosphere there is no longer one of this sort of um, open sky where there's no limit to where people can, can go. Now it's more of a, let's hold on to what we've got. Let's be more cautious. Let's start to distrust other people. There are too many scams, too many market crashes, stock market, peer to peer, all that kind of stuff. So you see the, the atmosphere in China is one of more, more of pessimism and arrogance and pride. It's like, oh, look how well we did. Look how awesome we are, but you guys suck. Whereas you feel like in Vietnam, it's always on the up and up. And that also translates into the attitude that people have on the street. You can tell from the Vietnamese people that we met and talked to and from what we saw just with our own eyes and observed, you can tell that the people in Vietnam are a lot more sort of open-hearted and a lot more um, accepting of the West. Whereas in China, people are becoming more and more suspicious and more, more apt to throw blame at the West for the problems that they're facing at home. So that's pretty much the be all and the end all of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I uh, hope you've enjoyed our still continuing Vietnamese adventures. We have a lot more videos about Vietnam over on ADV China and I can't say this enough. If you're one of my subscribers, there's no reason why you shouldn't go and watch ADV China because although some of you may not like my business partner Seamilk, it doesn't matter the stuff we get up to, the stuff we see, the things we explore, it's worthy of looking at and uh, there's so much to discover. So please go and check it out. So guys, I want to give you a little bit of a history here. If you have time, please stick around just for a minute or two. And it is about ADV China because we've just hit about the three and a half year mark of doing ADV China. And this, this came about after I did my first documentary. And um, you know, what led up to it was a whole lot of things. It was basically the culmination of all the effort I'd put into doing videos over the years. Because, you know, YouTube's a tough game. And um, I've been doing YouTube without earning a cent for about six years. And finally I got, uh, you know, some recognition. And the, the guys from China Radio International came down uh, to Shenzhen to interview me. And I met up with the uh, cameraman. Uh, we became fast friends. His name's Rick, a British guy. And we hang out, we drank, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, he was very interested in, you know, furthering his career as a filmmaker. And he was also very interested in the sort of interesting adventures I was doing every year on motorcycles. So we kind of came up with this crazy idea of doing a documentary. And uh, that's how Conquering Southern China came about. It was, you know, we self funded it and. Uh, went and did this massive big thing through all of the southern provinces and uh, it was a massive risk to take. I ended up losing most of my contracts and most of my work during that time because I was out doing this uh, big adventure. But you know, the outcome was fantastic. But it was during conquering southern China that we first, you know, I insisted for safety reasons that we get um, intercoms. And I wanted to involve sea milk in this because originally uh, conquering southern China was just supposed to be me. But uh, I, you know, I wanted to get sea milk involved, and I told Rick it would be a better idea. There'd be a good dynamic on camera, so we got sea milk involved in the whole thing. And I wanted to basically be able to talk to him, and uh, for safety reasons, warn him if there was something coming up, and also so we didn't get lost or you know that kind of thing. So we got these intercom systems. A lot of people ask like, how do we talk to each other on the bikes? Well, we use a, a Korean brand intercom system. Uh, not sponsored or anything, but uh, it works fantastic. We use uh, Senna as the brand. And uh, after the documentary, actually while we were filming the documentary, uh, I was just talking to Simo while we were riding. And I was like, you know what? We keep having these long conversations on the road here. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if we started kind of like an adventure talk show on two wheels? And, um, you know, maybe we can just start a different channel because we we kind of had a little churchill customs channel it used to be called churchill customs we were recording stupid things we did in the shop like 
you know, building bikes and things, but it was it was not very good. Nobody was really watching that stuff. It wasn't very interesting. And I thought, why don't we just change that channel to to like a weekly thing where we go out and um, you know talk about a topic because very often my videos I talk about things in a certain way your videos you talk about things in a certain way but uh, if we can get together and discuss these topics I think people would you know enjoy the insight and people that disagree with me might agree with you and vice versa and it'll give them a little bit of a different uh, perspective especially since you know sea milk being an American has a completely different view on life uh, than I do coming from South Africa and a British background so it's 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 a good dynamic I think so that's where it was all born from and so for those of you who are curious as to what ADV China is all about it's it's really just a it's an interesting thing once a week we we either go out on the bikes it, it alternates so it's we have a on the bikes one week then we have an off the bikes the next week and it's basically just us monkeying around and doing adventures and uh, we're expanding now and uh, we just got back from Vietnam so it's one of the first times we've gone to a different country to try this this whole format where we just rented bikes and we drove around and you know discussed the local you know culture and what we see and what we observe and compare it to China basically but it's uh, it's something that you know now that we've been doing it for three and a half years it's just hit me about how how important this this whole thing has been because we've been able to cover some very in-depth topics on there but also being able to have a hell of an adventure and you'll be able to go back and and uh, see some of the crazy things we've done and some of the interesting little areas we've discovered and things that we've uh, seen all over China and now other countries too you know we, we've been to Taiwan we've been to Vietnam and uh, we even recently just kind of part of a video we went down to the the border of Mexico we're going to go into Mexico we're going to go to India we've got plans to do Japan South Korea um, you know Thailand all the sort of Asian Southeast Asian countries we want to tick off the list Russia's on the list we've got a lot of places and we we obviously want to hit Europe as well but it's just for me it's one of the things I look forward to the most uh, every week is hopping on the motorcycle and just going out there because we do once a week go out and do an adventure and film some films and and do some things so I really do hope that I've convinced you guys to at least go and give it a try and go and watch an episode or two over on ADV China um, and uh, then I can see you guys there every Monday so it's not just uh, you know the Friday stuff here on my channel but uh, you know every single Monday we can we can hang out on ADV so anyway guys it's time to wrap up this video sorry about this very long sort of insert but uh, I really just wanted to get it out there and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video hey I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, insight into the two different cultures can't wait to see you in the next one and as always you know the drill just like Vietnamese coffee stay awesome every Friday you can see another Serpents a Day video over here Wednesday you can take a look at Lao 86 and of course, like I was saying, the most important, ADV China every Monday, 1pm Eastern Standard Time.